happened that way let's fast forward here uh we've got october 9th circled because this is uh well i guess we should give you the backstory steve austin's been gone for almost a year because of neck surgery and you know the story they hit that motherfucker with a car because he's bald and has a goatee right and it happened at survivor series 1999 and it was never revealed who was the driver? So when Austin finally comes back from this next surgery here in October, it's a natural storyline to figure out who hit him with the car. Uh, I guess we should probably mention the backstory here. Austin was seriously injured with a neck injury at SummerSlam 97. This is where his neck trouble started. It obviously got to a point where it wasn't workable, but it happened at a pay-per-view and it happens right around the same time that Russo's out. You've got new writers coming in and we have to create a reason sort of on the fly as to why or how this would happen. So let's talk about this night of raw here, October, 2000 rock and Rikishi beat Kane and angle. They go seven minutes and 23 seconds. Um, angle gets a rock bottom and then Rikishi sits on him for the pin. And then Mick Foley, who is the acting commissioner comes out and teases like he's going to finger the rock as the culprit who hit that motherfucker with a car. But at the last minute says rock wasn't guilty and said it was Rikishi because earlier Scotty too hotty had talked about partying with Rikishi in Detroit that night. And Foley said how Rikishi wasn't even in the WWF at the time. He technically was, but he wasn't doing the Rikishi character on TV. Rikishi admitted it and said he did it on his own to help the rock because the WWF never let the Islanders headline and the stars were always great white hopes like Buddy Rogers, Bruno San Martino, Bob Backlund, Hulk Hogan, and now Steve Austin. And by getting rid of Austin, it gave the rock an opportunity to be the top star and the Island boys were never allowed to be big stars. But the explanation and the way he explained why did it is maybe the thing I remember Rikishi for the most. (sighs) Yeah, this is, this is a prime example of what happens when you don't start with the finish. What I mean by that is when you write a book or you go to a movie, no matter what it is. If you're creating it, the ending in mind, you have to know, okay, this is how we're going to end this son of a bitch, because everything we do from beginning to the, the middle and the end gets to the big finish. When they ran Steve over, they had no clue other than to get rid of Steve. We'll figure it out when we get there. (laughs) And along the way, man, when it got there to, we can go back to who ran him over with car. Everybody had an idea. And I think that it was, God, was it Michael? I don't even remember who the hell came up with. What about Rikishi? And Vince just loved it because no one will guess that. And I'm like, Of course no one is going to guess that because it makes no sense for Rikishi to be the guy to run over Austin. And then just, we force fed this, this whole, you know, storyline. I did it for the rock. Not a bright spot in our creative tenure during this time, because we were just trying to put like, uh, square pegs and round holes. How disappointed do you think the fans were when it was Rikishi? Good God. I, I seriously recall a groan. Yep. There, there was a, you, you can feel the air come out of a building sometimes. And it was kind of like a, you're, oh my God. Oh my God. They're going to tell us who did it. Huh? And then they're waiting. They're waiting for, come on, come on, come on. Who's it? Who is it really? And it never came. 
Yeah. Not a, you know, and, and I was involved in it and, and tried. <laughs> I mean, it, it sucked. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't something, wasn't one of our brighter spots, but we kind of, we went with it. Who else was considered that you remember? Can I freestyle two guesses? Pra- practically everybody on the roster was considered. To me, it would have been an opportunity to do something with Billy Gunn. who you guys had tried to do some stop and start, or maybe even Chris Jericho. But Rikishi. The problem was when you take Vince out of the equation, um, which would have been the predictable thing. And you take the, the top guys out of the equation. It was an opportunity. This is an opportunity to make a new star. This is an opportunity to make somebody and bring them in and come in and have awesome work with them right away. Um, that's how Vince looked at it. And that was a charge. So we, we didn't have the usual suspects to work with. We, everybody on the roster was considered, considered and debated, but it came down to give us somebody new, give me a new story. Give me something different. And this was new and different. Meltz would write the choice of Rikishi was certainly controversial as they didn't elevate a young guy when they had the chance and overtly played the race card, which left the show with a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. The idea was it was a good idea because nobody suspected Rikishi. So people were fooled and that's this sort of logic Russo would use. The reason nobody suspected Rikishi is that it wouldn't have the impact as if it were a Michaels or events or even a Jericho and people wanted impact. Lots of people were talking about it after it was over, however, and a few days after this, I guess we should mention Rikishi teamed with triple H on house shows a few times to beat Kane and Kurt Angle. And then on October 16th, a week later, Kishi does an interview with coachman and he's saying all the racial things and bringing up that the rock was family and he felt deep down that he did what was right. Yeah. Throughout both of their careers though, it had never been mentioned that they were any kind of relation blood or not. So I did it for the rock here has been parodied for a long time. And I don't know if it's necessarily, uh, the glowing moment you guys had in mind. No, it really wasn't. It it was in hindsight. I almost wish we hadn't had a review. If you didn't have a big name player and something that was going to be riveting, I would have rather just left it a mystery. Yeah. And you could have revealed later that it was Hulk Hogan or the NWO or Goldberg or whatever. But yeah, but again, to defend it. And when you're in a, in a creative process and you have a a certain amount of talent to work with and you're given a, a charge, you do what you can. And, uh, people that don't work in creative and have the privilege of hindsight and looking back on situations without actually having to create it out of thin air. Um, it's easy to criticize and say, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? But when you're stuck with it right in front of you and you have to do something and everything that you throw out is nope, 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 nope. Finally, you're throwing everything out until finally, well, that's interesting. And you make it work. Because you're doing what you have in front of you that day. It's your, your usually, a, and this was at the 11th hour too. You know, this is coming up with it on a Sunday and shit for a raw Monday. And just, man, we're going live in 24 hours. Let's get this done. Let's come up with something and you got to make a choice and you go with it. Good or bad. Austin does a promo about Rikishi and eventually Rikishi challenges Austin to come to the parking lot. He does. And then Rikishi tries to hit that motherfucker with a car, but Austin dives out of the way. So Rikishi drives off, uh, a few days later, Rikishi uses a sledgehammer to destroy Austin's truck. And he's doing an interview with Jr. when coachman runs in telling him Rikishi is destroying the truck. He comes out to see his truck. all beat to shit and a car speeding off. And as he drives after the car in a ruined truck, Rikishi then attacks Jr. As Rikishi had an accomplice in all of this and, uh, Rikishi decks JR and is about to hit him with a sledgehammer when Mick Foley makes the save. 
So as a reminder, you guys have taken one of the most over baby faces you have. People just love this motherfucker dancing. And now he's a monster heel overnight. Yeah. Bigger the baby face, the bigger the heel. Oh, that worked. Okay. So this was successful. Thank you. Did you, you say he was a monster heel? Well, he is a monster. He's 400 pounds and he's a bad guy. I didn't say he was over as a heel. I, I just said he was a monster heel. He is a monster heel. Monster heel is good heel. So you're defending this. You think this was the right call, right? Vince? No, I don't think it was the right call in hindsight. However, at the time it was the only call and it's one we had to work with. I in think, hindsight, no, I think it sucks, but we didn't have that privilege at that time to know what the hell it was going to turn out like. Later that show, we had to do it. JR interviews the rock about Rikishi and rock says he's mad at Rikishi and he's mad that he thought he would have needed help to get to the top and mad that it somehow tainted his getting to the top, pointing out that he'd held the title several times when Austin was actually around. It's kind of fun that he's mad that Rikishi's using the race card saying he's been against that his entire life. Except maybe when he was in the nation of domination, but those are details. Um, he talks about how he's been on the phone with Austin about the whole thing and they're cool with each other. So the rock is careful to make sure that it's not, none of the stink from this angle is getting on him. Uh, and they even change Rikishi's theme music around this time. And it totally eliminates anything that anybody liked about the character. Chat me up about his new bad man i'm a bad man theme music oh he didn't want anybody dancing to the goddamn heel coming out with, with his old too cool music so we wanted to eliminate the possibility of that by changing it up and making nobody want to cheer for him be pissed off at the music be pissed off at him give him more things to be pissed off about let's go to no mercy in Albany, New York, October 22nd, Austin and Rikishi go to a no decision and what was billed as a no holds barred match in nine minutes and 21 seconds. And they showed Rikishi with a sledgehammer stalking the entrance way, waiting for Austin. And eventually he drives his truck to the ring. They have a fast paced brawl. Uh, they're all over the place. And eventually, uh, Austin hits Rikishi with several chair shots and he juices. Uh, Austin's destroying him with chairs, smashing him with the tailgate. Uh, eventually a bunch of police officers show up because, well, <laughs> Austin deposited Rikishi in the back of his truck, drove out of the building, drinking a beer while he's driving, which maybe wasn't the best idea. And then he puts him on the ground and prepares to run him over when a police car blocks the attempted murder. And, uh, then Austin smashes into their car, not once, but twice. So he's arrested and, uh, the officer in the car was taken out on a stretcher and they talked about Austin being in real trouble because he had injured a police officer in his attempt to kill Rikishi. He wasn't going to kill him. He's just going to run him over real bad. Make him hurt. Two and a quarter stars. Actually, you know what? Going back on that match, that match wasn't bad, especially for Steve just coming back. It was just a brawl. The finish. It was just a fight. No, listen, I like the fight, but the finish. What the fuck? What? We're drinking and driving and got to murder a guy. Well, okay. Well, that's why the cops came and they stopped it. Thank God. Thank God for the police. Yeah. They don't have another pay-per-view match after this. They have one more match on raw and then it just fucking goes away. Chat me up. Why did you got, I mean, we're attempting murder. I think the people, well, I'm, technically, I guess they're always attempting murder, but, uh, by the way, it just didn't work, man. The Yokozuna was so upset about this that he passed away the next day. That's just rude. No, he did. He passed away the very next day. I understand that, but it, it was, it was just a, it, it was something they tried. Didn't work. And <laughs> thank God Vince realized quickly. It didn't work. Move on. Cut bait. So yeah. And unfortunately, you know, Rodney passed away on October 23rd and, uh, 
Very sad time, man. It was the drizzling shits. The next night on raw, the show opened with Rikishi coming out saying he's going to support the rock and regaining the title. And he's uh, trying to help the rock the previous night rock comes out, starts insulting Rikishi. And he seemed almost ready to cry as rock was disowning him as a family member. Rock even tells him to get lost. And, uh, Rikishi tells the rock, he's going to continue to help him until rock finally gives him a rock bottom. And a few days later on SmackDown, Austin does an interview saying he accidentally hit the gas and he meant to hit the brakes. And now he's challenging Rikishi to a cage match on raw later in the show. We would see Rikishi destroy too cool with a bonsai on both guys. And then he challenged Austin to come out. And when he did a mystery guy attacked Austin, who's covered in blood now bleeding like a stuck pig. Eventually too cool makes the save and to show his appreciation, Austin hits grandmaster sex a with a stunner of his own on October 30th, Austin finally beat Rikishi at five minutes and 12 seconds in a cage match. Uh, he beat him with a stunner right in the middle and Rikishi's bleeding here from having the door slammed on his head. And later in the show during the rock versus Jericho, number one contender match, Rikishi comes out. And Jericho hits the lion salt, but Rikishi had knocked out the second ref. Finally, the first ref recovered, but rock kicked out. And eventually he gets the clean pin with the rock bottom. And after the match, Rikishi turns on the rock and leaves him laying, he even sits on him. And while the rock is down, Rikishi revealed that he lied and that rock all along was involved in running over Austin. And in fact, gave him the keys to the car. Boy, at this point, you guys are just trying to grab at anything. Trying to make them care. And it was just so much shit being thrown at the wall. And it was, again, you every week, <laughs> this is what you got to work with. Make it work. On SmackDown, Rikishi came out and talked about The Rock begging him to run Austin over. And then Angle came out and tried to talk The Rock out of the title match later in the show. And, uh, well, chaos ensues. There's going to be a DQ here when Jericho beats Rikishi, but Kane interferes and choke slams Jericho. This is very, very confusing here because there's so much going on at this point. Can the writers even keep up with the storyline? Sure. We can. Yes. Again, you're, you're the, the issue becomes you're, you're writing each week and you're getting through it. You're getting through what's in front of you at the time. So, yeah. And to to look back on it, it made a lot of sense then. On November 6th, it's supposed to be Austin and Rock against Rikishi and Angle in the main event, but uh, The Rock is mysteriously injured. So, Austin has to work the main event as a handicap match against both Rikishi and Angle. And Triple H comes out after Angle, but he clobbers Austin with a sledgehammer. Austin's bleeding again and left lying as the show ends. And triple H reveals that he was the accomplice. So the man who benefited the most from this angle where they hit that motherfucker with a car wasn't Rikishi. It was triple H. This, this is making more sense now. Well, you know how triple H got involved trying to do something with the, we had the, the mask guy and the leather jacket and all that shit to try to make people think that it was the rock. That was the masked one hiding and, and Rikishi and rock continually denying it. And then, and that was triple H that we used to do that shit. So when it came down, it just have it be triple H. God damn it. It makes the most sense. Who, by the way, <laughs> was suggested at the very beginning that it was triple H who hit fucking Austin. No, God damn. No. And then we get into it and. Shoes Hunter. It's Monday. Shit changes. All righty. 